come to Cruz del Carmen in the Anaga region today, in the northwest, sorry, northeast of Tenerife. And as you can see, this is a pretty popular place to come for a walk. Uh, last time we were here, we walked down to Punta del Hidalgo. Uh, today we're going to take a, a similar route, but this time down to the next town of Bacamar, which is just a little bit further south, further west, I suppose, along the, along the coast. Um, lots of people here for walking today. Uh, some of them are on official sort of guided tours, as it were. Some of them, like us, are just doing solo walking. So we'll just uh, check our route on this map here. And that's the one, PRTF 12, Cruz del Carmen to Bacamar. You find it so often with these walks that no sooner have you left the dropping off point with people milling around all over the place. You start on the Sendero and immediately you're pretty much on your own. Here we're walking through the lovely laurel forest. Well, no doubt when we drop a bit lower, get some more spectacular views of the region. We've come to the junction now of the footpaths. Uh, we've come from Cruz del Carmen, one kilometer, down to El Batan and Punta del Hidalgo. Um, I've done that one, but that's not the one we're going to do today. We're going to carry on to Bacamar on the TF12, uh, which is up this way. The Anaga region is one of the oldest regions geologically on Tenerife. Um, the rocks are around about five million years old, which sounds old, but of course not really in the great scheme of things because uh, in the UK, for example, there are rocks which are 1,000 million years old. So it's very much a, a new kid on the planet, Tenerife. Walking alongside the road for a short section here, which uh, I hadn't anticipated, I must say. But uh, it's interesting nonetheless. Just keep an eye on the paths. There's a path going down there, but there's no sign on it. So let's just continue a little bit this way and see where we get to. This is a bit strange, really. We're going across the corners, as it were, of this road as it winds its way down. Um, so it's a bit steeper than the road certainly is. And uh, sometimes we have footpath markers. There seems to be one here. Um, sometimes we don't. So it's a little bit odd. I'm just having a look to see whether we can continue along here. I might as well give it a go. I think it's going to drop down to the road anyway. But um, no, this one is uh, a little bit less well marked than many that I've been on. There's another post here, which is reassuring. And here we have a full blown set of signs. So that's what you want to see, because that's going to confirm our journey. And there it is, TF12, Bacamar, 7.9 kilometers to the right. We're just coming up to a little gap now in the Laurel Forest. I wonder which way we go. Let's just have a look here. We've got our first expansive view, but I don't think the footpath goes this way, or does it? There's uh, another route off that way, um, and there is no sign whatsoever of any footpath markings. So I think we're going to stay on the main route for the moment and just see where that takes us. We've seen another post marker confirming that this is indeed the TF12 that we're on, which is good. Um, so I don't know where that other little steep footpath went. And we're just coming up to another break in the woodland so that we can get some views across the Anaga region. Not a brilliant day for views, it's a bit hazy, but uh, nonetheless, just as we come up to this huge tree trunk here, 
we get a fantastic view down towards the sea and some of the bare rocks of the, the Anaga region. Now this looks as though it's the point at which we come out of the forested area and onto the cliffside paths, which is what I've been anticipating all the walk really. And sure enough we do. Because we're on pretty much three quarters of the way up on the, the right side of this valley. And then over there, you can see right across to the other side and beyond. It's pretty misty, so you can't see too much. Um, this is the only area really where you're not, uh, not exactly dominated, but you don't have the sight of Tady in the background wherever you turn. Uh, certainly if we could see Tady from this point, it would be pretty much in the distance, uh, looking comparatively small. And uh, as it's hazy today, we can't see it at all. Now this little property here is nothing but a concrete facade put on a, uh, a rock, basically. Uh, so the main body, if that's indeed a house, it certainly looks as like it could be. Basically, it's excavated out of that solid rock there, which is uh, something you don't see in many places, but you do see in Tenerife. So we have just come down this way, and we have actually stopped here for lunch because the view is pretty good, and we're going to head off down, and eventually we've got right down to sea level and back a mile, which is over in that direction. This is a different section here. This is uh, completely different to the forest sections. Much steeper, much more open, a bit more care needed, but stunning views right across the valley there and down towards the sea. Somebody's cut some steps out very carefully, so we'll use those. And then keep our eye on the ground until we get sure of our footing, using the walking pole as well but enjoying these views to the side, really fantastic. What amazes me about this region is the efforts that people have gone to in the past to create a bit of arable land. Here someone's built a huge uh, wall just to retain a small area of terraced cultivated land. And uh, obviously, well, it has long since gone into disuse, but um, still at one time it would have been somebody's livelihood, I guess, or certainly for subsist uh, subsistence farming. Um, and you see this all over. Here's another man-made wall, presumably to retain a, a terrace or at least to preserve the footpath, I don't know. Um, these footpaths would have been used for bringing uh, materials in and taking produce out, I guess, rather than just as a tourist facility such as they are today. Just on the other side of the valley, if I turn around here, you can see another construction there of three or four terraces, which uh, are mind-blowing, really, when you think of the work that's gone into creating those walls and bringing the fill in to create them sadly no longer worked. We're further down the valley side now and it's uh, not so steep. We're also in a different sort of vegetation entirely. So that gives a clue that we're very much coming to a lower altitude and a lower climate zone. It's interesting that this walk is graded as moderate on the official footpath information. And uh, I do wonder sometimes about footpath gradings because uh, yes, the first section was very easy indeed. And this section is not too difficult at all. But that steep section that we've just undertaken, uh, it wouldn't suit everybody by any means. Particularly if you're a little unsure of footing 
and you don't like having a narrow path with a vertical drop immediately to one side. We're much lower now and uh, more of the town of... Uh, we're much lower now and more of our final destination is coming into view. We'll just have a look over the edge here before we turn the corner. Got a bit breezier since uh, we start off, certainly a bit more exposed. So there's the town of uh, Blackamar and uh, somewhere in there will be our bus stop for the bus back to La Laguna. We have to change buses to get back to our destination, Puerto de la Cruz, but that's not a problem because the buses from La Laguna to Puerto are pretty frequent, so we shouldn't have too much to, too long to wait before we can uh, make our way to our final destination and have a, a nice shower and a drink and uh, whatever else. So that's the walk from Cruz del Carmen down to the coast at Bacamar. I hope uh, that you've enjoyed it. I certainly have. It's been the first time on most of this stretch and uh, I've learned a thing or two. Certainly it's not one that I can recommend to people who might not be experienced walkers, but the first part is, is certainly very easy and very, very nice to stroll along. So, hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one.